Hello guys and welcome back to trade to learn Are you a risky investor? Whether the answer is yes or no, diversification is very important. Diversification is pretty straightforward. It's the concept of dividing your investments up to reduce risk. In this video, we'll talk about the different types of risks in regards to investing, some potential problems with diversification, and some examples of diversified portfolios. So let's dive right in. First off, let's try to understand why diversification is important. Let's say you have a portfolio with only airline stocks. Share prices will drop following any bad news such as a pilot strike or an airplane explosion. This means your portfolio will experience a noticeable drop in value. You can counteract these stocks with a few railway stocks so that only part of your portfolio will be affected. In fact, there's a very good chance that these stock prices will rise as passengers look for alternate modes of transportation. You could diversify your portfolio even further because of the risks associated with these companies. That's because anything that affects travel will hurt both industries. Statisticians may say that rail and air stocks have a strong correlation. This means that you should diversify across the board, including different industries as well as different types of companies. The more uncorrelated your stocks are, the better. You have to make sure to diversify among different types of investments too. Different assets such as bonds and stocks don't react the same way to adverse events. A combination of asset classes like stocks and bonds will reduce your portfolio sensitivity to market swings because they move in opposite directions. So if you diversify, bad movements in one way will offset by a positive result in another. And don't forget location. Look for opportunities beyond your own geographical borders. After all, volatility in the US may not affect stocks or bonds in India or China. So investing in one place is worse than investing in more places. Now let's get into the different types of risks. There are two main types that we'll talk about systematic and unsystematic risk. The first one, systematic or market risk, is associated with every single company. Common causes including inflation rates, exchange rates, political instability, war, and interest rates. This category of risk is not specific to any company or industry, and it can be eliminated and reduced through diversification. It's a form of risk that every investor must accept. Systematic risks affect the market in its entirety, not just one particular investment or industry. The second type of risk is unsystematic risk. This risk is specific to a company, industry, market, or country. The most common sources of unsystematic risk are business risk and financial risk. But because you can diversify it, investors can reduce their exposure through diversification. The aim is to invest in many assets so they're not affected in the same way by market events. From what I've told you, diversification may only seem to do good, but there are some setbacks. First, it may seem somewhat burdensome managing a diverse portfolio, especially if you have multiple holdings and investments. Diversification can also be expensive. Not all your investment vehicles cost the same, so buying and selling will affect you because of the different transaction fees or brokerage charges. And since higher risk comes with higher reward, you may end up limiting your returns. Next, consider how complicated it can be. These products are often complex and aren't meant for beginner or small investors. Those with limited investment experience and financial backing would consider purchasing bonds or other types of assets to diversify against stock market risk. Unfortunately, even the best analysis of a company and its financial statements cannot guarantee it won't be losing investments. Diversification won't prevent a loss, but it can reduce the impact of fraud and bad information on your portfolio. Now let's get into an example of diversified investments. A diversified investment portfolio includes different asset classes such as stocks, bonds, and other securities, but that's not all. These vehicles are diversified by purchasing shares in different companies, asset classes, and industries. 
For instance, a diversified investor's portfolio may include stocks, consist of retail, transport, and consumer staple companies, as well as bonds, both corporate and government issued. Further diversification may include market money accounts and cash. Here are a few examples. This example is my portfolio on Robinhood. That was all for this video. We talked about the importance of diversification, so make sure to keep that in mind when you're buying assets and stocks. Make sure to like and subscribe, and see you next time.